I'm Katie Ullman reporting for Katie Chats here at Smithy TV in downtown Toronto. Check. for Katie Chats in downtown Toronto with stand-up comedian DK Fan. How did you initially get into stand-up? Um, well, I started off in an office job and I hated it. And uh, my sister was telling me about all the stuff she was doing when she was taking acting at York. Uh, so she's now in theater in New York and then I decided to follow in her footsteps. So I tried out acting at first uh, and then I ended up going to improv at Second City and then they offered a, uh, a stand-up comedy class there, which I took on a dare. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I just fell in love with it. Like, I loved it. It's, it was a lot more fun because you didn't have to work with other people. Um, it was kind of like a, a loner-friendly sport in a way where you don't have to, like, coordinate as much and you can do it at your own pace. And I just found that um, it just fit my personality better. Like, I guess it was just something that, was, that came more natural to me than pretending to be, like, pretending to be a character or doing something that I'm not naturally uh, doing from a day-to-day -day basis, whereas I'm used to just being really sarcastic or, like, joking around in my everyday life. So... That's how I kind of got started in it. How did growing up in Brampton influence your comedy? Um, I was uh, one of the few Asian kids in Brampton uh, in a sea of white kids. And then um, I guess it became more, uh, there's, there's a lot more brown people there as I grew up. But I, I, I saw everything through the lens of an Asian person. Like, I guess you don't try to be racist in your everyday life, but then you kind of notice like people treat you a little bit differently just based on the color of your skin and stuff like that. And then... I guess uh, I just grew up to be a really sarcastic person as well, um, just being around friends and family and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I found that suburban comics, I guess, also have a different delivery and style compared to comics from the downtown core as well. Like, they tend to talk about homeless people and uh, the TTC a lot more, and I didn't have the TTC in Brampton, right? So, like, I didn't mind public transit. It wasn't that bad. I wouldn't meet Jesus every other day and different, di different versions of it, mm -hmm. like when I was taking the bus to school. So... Mm -hmm. That's kind of what my experiences were like growing up. Interesting. What was it like for you when you got to perform your stand-up routine in Montreal and New York City? Um, it was amazing. Like, I realized that Montreal, was, to me, when I was there for the one week I was there anyway, it was really clean. Uh, like, I, was, I wasn't used to it. Like, everybody was, it seemed a lot more uh, political or social commentary based, which is something that I really like because mm -hmm. it was a lot less blue humor. Like, it was a lot less talking about, like, things that were dirty or, like, racism or sexism or anything like that or just homeless people it was just really clever stuff that really mattered like especially when i was in montreal i learned a lot more about the political situation of montreal and how it tied into canada than i would from reading the news or um you know just from other people or just socializing just all through comedy like i didn't realize that they had this whole pasta gate thing in montreal actually um new york was like the exact opposite so it was incredibly blue it was like um a lot more dirty jokes, um, a lot more comics, and a lot wider range of skills. So you'd have like some of the worst comics I've ever seen at the open mic level, and some just really talented people. But like, if people are coming from everywhere to go to New York uh, for the arts, then it's it's a really cool experience. Like you see a wider range, right? What's your artistic process like? How do you come up with jokes? I I can't sit and write jokes. So for me, I rely on going out with friends, and then I like to draw everything from. Uh, from personal experiences, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I would say I'm more of an observational comic. Like uh, this one guy I met when I was really early on in my career named Ron Jossel told me to find things that make you mad, happy, and sad. And then I took that and ran with it. Like it was, it was probably the best advice I was given when I started out. And I realized that I can, I can take that and impose on other people as well. I can find out what makes other people mad, happy, sad, or what concerns them in their lives. And talk about that. So it's just kind of like I want to be as relatable to uh, my target audience as possible, and talk about what their concerns are, and kind of like tie that back into my tie that back into my life, mm -hmm. and even learn from other people. So like I can't write if I don't go out. Like I go out and meet people, and I see what everything is like through their eyes, and talk about their concerns, but in a comedic fashion. What advice would you give to an aspiring comedian? Mm, stick to it. It's uh, it's not fun when you start out. It's not all the glamour and glitz that you would uh, you would think it is. Um, it's, it's tough. <laughs> it's tough, but it's really rewarding. If you're willing to work at it, then it's definitely something that's a lot of fun. And where's the best place to find out more information on you and all of your upcoming shows online? Uh, dkfan.ca. Thank you so much, DK. Congratulations and best of luck in all the years to come. Thank you. It was very fun uh, interviewing with you, Katie. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Katie Allman reporting for Katie Chats in downtown Toronto.